Good morning. Continue to remember our church and your prayers and, and all the sickness. And uh, we've had a several folks that's gotten better, but there's still a lot of sickness. And uh, still remember those that have lost loved ones. They still need the comforting hand of God. Uh, and just pray you one for another. And uh, we'll get into this this morning and read a, a little bit of uh, scripture out of the book of Acts uh, in the fifth chapter. Uh, but a certain man named Ananias with Sapphire, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost, and great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, Yeah, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet, and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in and found her dead, and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church, and upon as many as heard these things. Just uh, in the previous chapter, uh, toward the end of it, uh, there were several uh, people from the church that were uh, that they were selling possessions and and they were given that, uh, bringing it to uh, the apostles and laying it at their feet and uh, and then these things were distributed so that anybody that was in need was no longer in need. They was taking care of the needs of the people and the needs of the apostles and and. But Ananias and Sapphira, they, they made a promise uh, to God, uh, not necessarily to Peter or to any of the other apostles, but uh, they decided they're going to sell this piece of land that they have, and, and they're going to give it to uh, the apostles. They're going to give it uh, to the Lord, uh, so to speak. But after that, they had sold the land and they got the money in their hands, greed began to take over, and they decided, well, we... We don't want to. We don't want to give all this. We'll we'll hold back some of it, and and uh, we'll have a little more. But they had already promised this and that to God. So they they came and that to to Peter, and they laid down the part that or Ananias did at first, and and brought in the uh, the money and laid it down, and God laid it upon Peter's heart to to speak to Ananias and tell him, well, is this how much you sold the land for? And he said, yeah, this is how much. Uh, but it, it wasn't the truth. And Peter told it, said, well, you've not lied to me, but you've lied to God. And we have to be careful uh, in our life that we don't lie to God. Now, what you tell me isn't going to make that big a difference, although it's still wrong in that to, uh, for you to lie to me or to lie to uh, anybody else. But when we lie to God, we don't have a way to cover that up. God knows. God knows your heart. God knows exactly where that you stand with him when you're standing there in a church and then uh, during the, the invitation or any other time through the service and God begins to speak to your heart to, to go to an altar, uh, to to, turn, to get closer to him, to repent or, or, or to be saved or whatever your need might be. And you say, well, I don't need to go. I, I'm all right. Well, God knows. God wouldn't speak to your heart if there wasn't a need. Well, and it may even be to pray for somebody else. You might say, well, I can pray just as well at home. Yeah, we can pray at home. But if God's laying it on our heart to go to an altar, that's where that we need to go. Or, or whatever it might be that he lays on our heart. We, we make up a lot of excuses why that we won't do the things that, that that's God's laid on our heart, uh, especially during a worship service and, and even out as, a, uh, uh, as we're supposed to be a witness and that to others and and God lays it on our heart. Well, I can't. Uh, I, I can't do that. I, I don't have the ability to do that. Well, first of all, God's not going to lay it on your heart if God's not going to give you the ability to do it. Now, you may not be able to do, uh, 
perfectly. You may not be able to do it as well as somebody else, but uh, we don't have to do it as well as somebody else. We just have to do what God lays on our heart to do. And when we hold back that uh, and we use these excuses, we're lying to God because God knows and God knows our heart. God knows what he has the power to do. And I uh, admit you in Sunday school, God probably was calling me to preach. And I kept using God, I can't, I can't speak in front of people. I can't get up in front of people and, and do this. I, I, I wouldn't be able to do it. And, and finally, God told me, so, well, I don't want you to do it. I just want you to be willing. And, and he's going to do it. And I realized that since then, that it is God. God has to do it. Because when we try it on our own, Oh, we fall on our face. Well, we're an embarrassment. We, 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 we struggle. And, but when, when we turn loose and we let God use us, uh, then, then it's, we might not become famous and we shouldn't be looking for that. We should look. And that just to, to let the to get the word of God out, and He said His word wouldn't return void. Whether it's His word through a song, His word through a testimony, His word through preaching or teaching, whatever it is that God leads you to do, but when we hold back and we lie to God, oh whoa! You see what happened to uh, Sapphires and Ananias? <clears throat> they uh, that they died right there. That that was the end. Uh, we have a God that, that that's long suffering. We have a God that, that that's full of grace and mercy, uh, but we also have a God of wrath. Uh, and we're, we're walking on dangerous ground, and that when we lie, and that to God, when we don't uh, uh, do that which God lays on our heart, when we begin to make excuses, and that to God, uh, we're walking on dangerous ground. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. Uh, we need to be careful. Uh, we need to be sure. Uh, and uh, I believe <clears throat> it was written in that one of the epistles that uh, make your, your, your calling, your election sure. Do that which God lays on your heart, whether it be to go to an altar, whether it be to testify or to sing a song or, or, or to uh, do any other job in the church or to witness to somebody out uh, at your workplace or in your neighborhood or in the marketplace and uh, do that which God lays on your heart and don't hold back in that from God. Don't make excuses to God and especially don't lie in that to God because God knows the truth. Jesus is the the, the truth. Uh, make your calling and election sure. God bless.